Hello everyone, welcome to the Archipelago live stream. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, Wayne. Thank you for joining. Hey, Lauren. Welcome back to, if you've been to a live stream before. Yeva's here, hi Yeva. And if you're new to the Archipelago live stream, welcome as well. I'll give you a bit of an orientation shortly. My name is Liam, I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create presets uh, and creative profiles for photographers. And we're gonna be showcasing a new upcoming set in this live stream. So we're gonna be editing with some incredible images, showing off the new set, which is Quest 15 Opalescent but also just a great opportunity just to connect with you, the community. So if you have any questions as we go through the stream, don't hesitate to ask in the chat and I'll try and answer those live as we go through these edits, whether that's about the presets or editing techniques or anything as we go through. Hey Josh, thanks for joining. Benny. Mark from Norway, incredible. People tuning in from Australia as well, which is incredible, good morning. Auckland, New Zealand, whoa, yes. So we'll get started shortly. We've got lots of incredible images to edit with today. But not only that, we'll be giving away a set of these presets as well. So if you're here, tune in live. Make sure to stick around till the end of the stream. All you need to be, uh, all you need to do to be in with a chance of winning is be here, interact in the chat as we go through the stream, and we'll be choosing someone to win this set at the end of the stream as well. So I'll show you the uh, the presets in just a moment. Uh, but a big thank you to photographers that have submitted their images for us to use. In this live stream, as we go through, you'll see the photographer's name up in the top left of each image. Some incredible work that we're going to be going through today. Got some indoor shots, some outdoor shots, some eternity. Some that are sort of underexposed and quite a lot that are correctly exposed as well. So a bit of variety there. Good chance to showcase these presets. So like I said, this is Quest 15 Opalescent. This is the latest release that's coming out on the 1st of April. Incredible presets from our developer, Chris. And just in time for spring as well. These are really, really gorgeous uh, pastel colors. Um, really bright, really colorful. Absolutely perfect for springtime. I've been loving these on my images as I've been testing these. So let me dive in and show you the presets in just a moment. The way that I tend to work these streams, um, we'll go through and we'll edit all of these images with the presets. Like I said, I'll answer any questions that you might have as we go through as well, so don't hesitate to ask. Um, I like to do these in the order that you like to see. So we'll edit image number one, just to showcase the presets and go through all the different uh, presets in this collection. Um, but as we go through, if you let me know which image you'd like to see next, just let me know the name, the number, sorry, of the uh, thumbnail in the top left there. And uh, I'll try and do those in the order that you want to see. So here we go, let me walk you through the set first of all. So I've got this gorgeous image here from Jocelyn. And the first thing I'm going to do is just correct the uh, white balance and exposure, which is something you should always do before you apply the preset. So just a slight bump in the overall exposure, but actually I think white balance is looking pretty nice. Maybe a tiny bit of an increase in the temperature. That's looking pretty good to me. So let's take a look at the presets. We've got three presets in this set and we've also got three tools to go along with it, as well as the incredible opalescent uh, profile. So first up, AQ15-1, 
And look at that, just brings so much life to this image. Really gorgeous vibrancy. There's lovely pastel colors there. AQ15 2. So you'll notice um, if you take a look at the greens in the dress here, the blues in the shirt, and then also the colors in the background up here, you'll notice how they shift, as well as skin tones as well. So we move to a little bit sort of more uh, yellow tone in the skin tones. The green becomes a little bit more punchy, a little bit warmer. And we get a little bit more of that blue in the shirt there as well. A really nice thing with this set actually, they're not wildly different as you go from preset to preset. They're subtly different where you could actually use all three in one shoot and have it look very consistent. Um, but depending on what colors are in the image, you'll see more of a difference. So as we go through, you'll kind of see a little bit more of the variety. And then AQ15-3. So nice and warm. You can see the greens up at the top of the image there. Warm up, a little bit more punchy boost in the skin tones as well. So let's go ahead and apply one of these presets to this image. I think, I think I'm going to go for AQ15-3 for this. I like the warm tone in. And of course we've got the opalescent uh, profile which is applied. That's set to zero as default. And what this allows us to do is lift the shadows up uh, and push the colors to be more pastel. So if you want to really emphasize that pastel look, that airy look, you get that real nice softness as you do this. So it just lifts those shadows right up. You see how the, uh, the colors just lift up and become more pastel. And it also adds a nice softness to the image as well. So I think it looks really good on this. I'd probably bring it up quite high, maybe about there, about 100, 108. Maybe bring the exposure down a tiny touch to uh, compensate. And then I'll show you the, the tools that come with this as well. So we've got Dreamy as the first tool, and I absolutely adore this. Uh, so Dreamy just adds exactly that, a dreamy look to the image. So you get a really nice soft diffusion, just reducing the details there, giving you a nice soft look. Uh, and what's really clever about this is it actually uses the new masking uh, tools within the latest versions of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. So when you apply this, it actually applies a mask layer with that effect on it, which is quite handy, you'll see why in a little while. So there is grain applied as default. If I go ahead and zoom in on this image, you should be able to see that there's some nice grain there, but there's a grainy preset here, which just pushes that, um, adds a lot more grain, and it also uh, reduces the details as well. So if you have a look around the subject's eyes there, you can kind of see it just softens it up. Again, a really nice effect if you want to push that dreamy look, just soften up the details a little bit there as well, and add a little bit more texture with the grain. And then the last one we've got is punchy, and that is going to do exactly that. It's going to add a little bit more punch to the image. So if it's lacking in contrast, you can use the punchy tool here just to bring a little bit more of that in. So sometimes this can be nice if you increase the opalescent profile, you like what that's doing, you have it all the way up to say 200, uh, but you feel like you need a little bit more punch after doing that, you can just use the punchy tool here to bring that back. Or again, for anything backlit or anything with low contrast, uh, a great option to have. So I really like this as it is. I think I am gonna put the dreamy effect on here though. And one cool thing that I'll show you with the dreamy effect, because it's done through this new masking setup as part of the latest versions of Lightroom Adobe Camera Raw, uh, you can actually adjust it. So not only can you adjust the actual effect that's applied, but you can go in and you can remove it from parts of the image. So for this, let's say if we didn't want the effect to be so pronounced on the couple here, we could go to subtract and let's go for a radial gradient gradient that will allow me to select an area of the image where i can remove the effect so I'll position that here over the subjects i can set how much feather there is there and of course increase or decrease the size so i think somewhere around that looks good to me so that's just reducing the effect uh, on the subjects there but we still get it around the edges and i can show you that here if i go up to the little eye i can click that and that's going to hide the effect and then bring it back. So we're not affecting their faces, but the rest of the image gets that really nice softness up here and then down at the bottom there as well. 
So super useful to have that as a mask because you can just go in there and tweak that. You could use um, a linear gradient if you want to remove it from say the bottom or the top or from one of the sides or radial or even a brush if you want to remove it with a brush. So really, really nice to have that option. So here is a side by side. And that was with AQ15-3 opalescent profile increased to 108. We've used the dreamy uh, tool that comes as part of this set and we've just reduced the mask over the subjects. And look at that, super, super nice. I'm sure you'll agree. Let's have a look. Gosh, that looks lovely. So good, those are stunning presets. Yes, thank you very much. Can't wait to use these this spring. Yeah, Bobby, these are awesome for spring photos. Just brings so much of that lovely springy vibe. Gorgeous colors, nice and pastel. We've got Chris in the chat as well. Chris is the developer behind this set. So if you have any specific questions for Chris, feel free to ask in the chat. I'm sure he's happy to answer. So there is the before and after. Slight increase in the exposure. We've adjusted the, uh, the white balance a tiny touch, and then we've added AQ15-3. We put the dreamy effect on there, opalescent profile up to 108. Boom, so that's the first image done. Looks like we might got some new people in here as well, so thank you for joining. So good to have you here. My name's Liam, I'm one of the developers here for Archipelago, and we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. And in this live stream, we are showcasing a new set which is gonna be coming out on the 1st of April. So just a few days time, uh, and that is Quest 15 Opalescent, which is perfect for your springy images. So we've edited one of the photos, image number one. If you let me know in the chat which image you'd like to see next, you've got the number in the top left of the thumbnail there, and I'll work through them in that order. Like I said, we've got a couple of indoor images there. We've got uh, some slightly underexposed ones like this and this, uh, some nice colorful ones here as well. Bobby says April 1st can't come soon enough. Absolutely. So while we're deciding which images we want to have edited next, I can see Yeva's selected one in there, so we'll go with that one in a moment. Uh, just to let you know, we have our spring sale on at the moment, and that's running through until Thursday the 31st. We're offering 30% off presets, uh, just using the code spring sale. So if you're watching this live, you've got a few days before the sale ends, so do take advantage of that. Like I said, the code is spring sale and you get 30% off uh, presets, and that's until Thursday 31st of March. All right, so we've got some options coming through for images. Nine is a selection from Yeva. We've got five or 10 from Bobby, five from Olivia and Ashley selected two. So let's do nine, uh, let's do, yeah, nine, 10, five, and then two. All right, image number nine. So look at this gorgeous image from Blair here. Love the backdrop. You can see this mountain range looking super nice. These trees down here as well. So this would be a good one to show you the, uh, the greens in particular. So let's have a look. I'm gonna increase the exposure maybe just a tiny touch. Just feel like there's a little bit of shadow on the subject there. I think white balance is probably looking okay. I could increase it, but I quite like, I quite like where it's at. So let's just have a look at the presets and we can decide after we've applied them. So AQ15-1, wow, look at that. Super nice, just lifts those shadows. I love what it's doing to the greens there. Just really, really nice and light toning in the greens, not oversaturated. Uh, AQ15-2, shifts those greens to be a little bit warmer. We get uh, a little bit of a change in the blues if you look at the, the back here. So this is AQ15-1, AQ15-2, bit of a shift in the blue toning. Skin tones are shifting here as well. That's looking really nice. And then AQ15-3, which is the warm, the warmer toned presets, it pushes a little bit more uh, color into the greens, pushes them a little bit more warm. Uh, we're getting warmed up skin tones there as well. So super, super nice. I think two is looking good on this one for me. So AQ15-2. 
and of course got the opalescent profile set to zero as default but if you want to push this look even further you can increase this so it's lifting those shadows and just giving us that really gorgeous pastel look i think for this we definitely want a bit of this so maybe around about here 64 that's looking really nice uh, let's take a look at the, at the tools we've got dreamy again adding that softness and actually i think that looks really nice across this whole image yeah so i think we could go for that uh, i don't think i want to use grainy because i like the amount of grain set as default on this and i don't think we need punchy it does look nice if you prefer that more contrasty look but i think for me this looks really really nice um here's the here's the before after so it just really lifts up those shadows we get that really nice tone into the colors here there's a side by side i love that super nice retains detail in the highlights so you can kind of see the the mountain range that i talked about there at the back um, but really nice detail on the subject skin tones looking lovely and just that glowiness from the uh from the mask so if i go ahead and hide that this is without the uh, the dreamy tool and this is with both look nice but i think the way that it, if i zoom back out on this so the way that it looks could go either way actually but i, I do like it with the dreamy effect applied i think it just looks really soft and beautiful so again there's before and after so soft and dreamy says yeva love the way it looks on the atmosphere in the background a dreamy tool is magic yeah to be fair i've been using dreamy on quite a lot of stuff because it's just a mask that applies over the top of the image um, you can obviously mix it with any other presets and profiles which is very very handy so i've been using it on quite a bit of stuff just to give that nice soft diffuse look all right so we said i think we said 10 then 5 then 2 so let's go for 10 next gorgeous image here from sarah love this with these kind of twisty branches behind and this golden light just glowing in from the from the very back there so it is quite underexposed so i'm going to bring the exposure up a bit here let's add a touch more warmth maybe around about there yeah that's looking good so aq15 one oh yeah that's super nice again love what it's doing with the greens just get that kind of cooler tone into the greens there retains the oranges in these kind of branches behind which is quite nice aq15 two and aq15 three oh this is a tough one actually it could be one or it could be three the warm tones of three might be swinging it though let's give it a will aq15 three opalescent profile I'm not going to go too high, I don't think, because I quite like the way that the sh shadows are rendering in the uh, in the default look. But maybe lift it a little bit somewhere around about there. We can bring the exposure back down a tiny touch. Uh, because this is backlit, I mean, it's very diffused, so there is still quite a decent amount of contrast. But if you wanted to have that more punchy look, you can go ahead and use the punchy uh, tool, which I do think works well with this. We could bring the exposure back up a little bit. And it gives us a little bit more flexibility to increase the opalescent profile. So uh, this is with AQ15.3. Uh, we've used Punchy to bring a little bit more contrast in there. We've increased the opalescent profile to 63. And there's before and there's after. Obviously, a decent increase in the exposure was needed on this image, but gives you a good idea of what it's doing to the colors there. Uh, if you really want to go for that sort of more pastel look, you could bring this up and have it sort of nice and bright. But I think somewhere around there looks really nice with this image. Here's the side by side. Olivia says, love this, gorgeous on the skin tone. Absolutely. Very, very nice. Wayne says, I love the ability to mix and match with the profiles. It's a great feature. Yeah. Awesome, awesome feature to be able to select a profile uh, with a different preset 
And then of course, we've got the masking tools, which are new as well. And we've got lots of, lots of things that take advantage of that. So things like the dust and scratches and all that kind of stuff that allow you to layer it. So just so many different elements that work really well together and just give so much uh, kind of creative opportunity to do whatever you want to do with your images. So again, bringing some additional tools to that with this set, Quest 15. Lisa, so gorgeous, damn. Yes, Lise. All right, so we are three images in. Uh, I think the choices, the selection, sorry, we're five and two next. So do let me know what you want to see after we've done five and then two. So another image from uh, Blair here. This is a really nice uh, landscape setting. We've got the couple in the foreground here. Uh, I think exposure probably could do with being increased just a little bit here. Just to make sure that the subjects are well exposed. And I think we are needing a little bit more warmth in the temperature. Uh, maybe bring the tint back down just a little bit. Somewhere around there looks good to me. Nice starting point. So AQ15-1. Again, loving the greens here. AQ15-2. AQ15-3. I think one is winning it for me. Let's have a little look. So we've got, yeah, I'm gonna go with punchy on this actually, because I just quite like the way that it's rendering the subjects in it. It's just gonna give me a little bit more flexibility to increase the opalescent profile. And I like what that's doing. So somewhere around there looks good. That's set to 89. So that's AQ15-1. We've got the punchy tool used there and then opalescence set to 89. So here's before, here's after. I love the greens. Super, super nice. What's really nice with this image, if you look at the before, obviously you've got the green here and you've got kind of the trees. But we've got this sort of area that runs along here. It's maybe not quite as flattering, so there's sort of like uh, a little bit less of the green tone. It's just almost like some gaps in the vegetation. But what's really nice is with this preset applied, it just kind of fills that in and you get this really nice soft green that runs all the way through the background. Of course, with the subjects wearing what they're wearing, they kind of pop from that quite nicely, which is looking really good. So there's before, there's after, here's the side by side. Love that. And once again, it's just retaining the details there in the sky. So it's just a little bit edging on overexposed and we've been able to bring the exposure back up on the subjects but retain the nice cloud structure in the sky at the back there as well so super nice um, could go for just a tiny bit of more warmth in there maybe somewhere around there might look a little more natural but I love 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 the greens All right, so image number two, we'll do that one in just a moment. And then an indoor one after five and two, Bobby says. All right, cool. We'll go for, we'll go for either four or six then. So let's do two next. So definitely need to increase the exposure quite a bit on this one. So probably somewhere around about there is looking good. A little bit more warmth. Just looking at the subjects, just to make sure that's looking natural. Just gonna do a tiny bit of straightening. Lovely stuff. All right, let's take a look. AQ15-1. Super, super nice. Love the colors here. This this really reminds me of um, when you overexpose Portra, Kodak Portra film, um, and you get that kind of really nice pastel look. Definitely has that vibe. AQ15-2, looking nice as well. Shifting, you can see the blues in this person's jacket over here and the, the colors in the sign there. How they alter a little bit. The yellow becomes a little bit more punchy as well. And then AQ15-3, I think, I think two for this. I quite like how that's looking. Let's go ahead and increase opalescent. See so how it just brings up those shadows and gives us that 
more pastel look to the colors as well. So I think it's somewhere around there. Yeah, let's bring the exposure a tiny bit more. All right, so let's have a look at the tools. Let's see if we'll use any of these dreamy. Possibly, I quite like that actually. Let's go for dreamy. And actually I'm gonna go for grainy as well because I think it just really suits this image. So that extra punch in the grain. I'm not going to go for punchy because I like the way that the uh, image looks as it is. So let's take a look. This is before, this is after AQ15 2. And let's take a look at the mask. I might bring this down on the subjects just a tiny little bit. We'll go with the radi radial gradient again. But I'm going to go for quite a high amount of feather just so it's quite a soft transition let's have a look this is this is without the radial gradient and this is with so it just brings back a little bit more detail on the subjects there which I think was really nice but we get that nice softness in the rest of the image so here's before here's after and there's the side by side comparison Wayne says, great to see the greens are not oversaturated. That'll be on the last image that we just edited. Yes, I agree. The greens look really, really nice in this set. Nice variety as well, even just across the three presets. Lauren says, one click magic. For sure. Ashley says, oh wow, stunning. Amazing. So we'll do one of the indoor photos in a moment. If there's another image that you want to see edited next, we've still got, well, we've got four, which is one of the indoor images and five, uh, six, which is another indoor one. Uh, we've also got image number three and seven and eight left to do. So a few left to go. If you are just joining the stream or if you just joined uh, partway through, welcome. Thanks for joining. Just a little reminder for anyone that is here live during the stream, we'll be giving away a pre-release copy of these presets at the end of the stream, so do stick around. All you need to do is just interact in the chat as we go through the rest of the stream. We'll be choosing someone to win this set early, so you'll get your hands on this nice and early so you can start editing your spring images with it straight away. Uh, don't worry if you are a Quest subscriber as well. So this is part of our Quest collection. So with Quest, we bring out a new set every month. Uh, with this one, it is Quest 15, so it's our April release. So if you're a Quest subscriber, which is $8 each month, you'll get this set as part of your subscription for free. So you can just download this as part of your $8 uh, per month subscription. But if you're not subscribed or if you just want to get the standalone presets, you'll be able to buy these for $49 when they come out on the first. Um, but yeah, if you are part of the Quest subscription, um, obviously, if you are the winner, we'll substitute that with a different set or some other swag. We've got some cool stuff we can send you as well. So don't worry, um, you're still in with a chance of winning something cool. Uh, so again, thanks for joining. Do let me know if you have any questions as we go through this. I'll try and answer them as well. So Wayne says, do the tools work with linear gradients? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So where I've just used the um, radial gradient to remove um, the tool from an area of the image, you could do that with um, either a brush or a linear gradient as well. Um, so yes, absolutely, they do work with that. All right, so let's do image number six. So this is one of the indoor images here. So let me just do a tiny little bit of straining on this one. And Let's see if we can get the white balance looking a little bit more natural. I would say somewhere around about there looks good to me. All right, let's take a look. So AQ15-1, oh, that's super nice. Look at that. Really, really suits the uh, that. It uh, looks like natural light coming in from the left there and the way that's illuminating the subject. Very, very nice, AQ15-2. So with this, we can see a little bit of a shift in the colors of the sofa uh, skin tones. You can see the greens and the plants behind as well and in uh, in the subject's outfit. And then AQ15-3 with that nice consistent warm tone in. And I'm not sure which one to go for. I think one, I think AQ15-1 was just 
looking super nice from the one clicks. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the opalescent profile. Not too much, because I like the, the dimension that we've got with a little bit of that shadow um, on the subject. So I'm not gonna increase it too far. Um, and actually we could afford to bring the exposure back down a tiny little bit. So I think somewhere around there. Let's take a look at Dreamy. So that would be nice if we wanted to kind of have a little bit more of a muted, uh, softer look, but I quite like the way that this looks as it is. I'm not gonna put more grain on, because I, again, I like the default amount. I don't think we need punch on this, because we've got, again, a good amount of contrast in the image. So I just really like this. Tiny little increase in the opalescent profile, uh, and AQ15, uh, no, one, AQ15 one. So this is before. Obviously we've done a white balance correction there as well, so you'll see a little bit of a shift in that. But there's the after, so super, super nice. There's the side-by-side -side comparison. If I go ahead and zoom in on the subject there. Really nice skin tones, gorgeous colors uh, throughout the image. Everything looks really natural, but just has that sort of lift and that kind of more pastel look. Uh, not overly saturated, but just a nice amount of vibrance um, to those colors. Love the, the colors in the, uh, in the rug down here as well. It just brings out some of that blue really nicely. Looking very, very nice. Bobby says, looks like it works really well on underexposed images. So thank you for showcasing that for us. Yes, it's handy to see if you tend to underexpose um, or you have a uh, you know, decent amount of underexposed images. It's nice to see what they look like. They will be different, you know, from if you kind of correctly expose or overexpose, you will see a difference in the way that they render, but they do really work really well on underexposed images as well as uh, correct exposure. So handy to see. It's always nice to try and include a bit of variety in these just so you can see what they look like in different conditions. Bobby says it actually makes the skin tone look more natural than in the original. Yeah, definitely. There was a little bit of white balance correction that helped with that, I think, as well. But um, the skin tones across this set are super, super nice. All right, so let's start rattling through these last few images. So we've got three, we've got four, we've got seven and eight. So let's just go through them in that order. So incredible image here from Sergio. I'm going to bring up the exposure quite a bit on this one. And I think it needs a tiny little bit more warmth. Yeah, just a little, not too much. So let's take a look. AQ15 at 1. AQ15 2. And AQ15 3. I think 1 is calling out to me. I just really like the way that it's rendering the, the blues in the sky. Uh, if you look at the blues, that's probably the biggest difference as we move through these three presets. So one is a little bit more natural, two, you get that kind of more desaturated, slightly paler look. And then with three, um, you've got it pushed a little bit more towards the teal side. But I think for this, I quite like the, the way the blues are rendering because it contrasts against the colors um, in the subjects, what they're wearing and this backdrop and uh, the skin tones as well. So I think this looks really nice to me. Again, let's have a play with the profile. Yeah, I think a little bit of an increase in this. Um, we've got a couple of options here. You could either really push that sort of uh, light um, pastel look and increase the exposure, which I think I will do, or you could just bring that back down a little, a little bit. I actually quite like how that's looking with those kind of really bright highlights. And um, you're still retaining the details. So if we look at the before, and that after you can still see all the details, but I just really like the way that it's pushing those to be really nice and bright. Uh, so we've got the dreamy effect, and I think that looks really nice on this actually. It's just giving that diffused look, softening out the details, uh, and I think that's really helping this image. So I would definitely go ahead and apply the dreamy effect. And I'm not gonna reduce it on the subjects or anything for this. I think I'm gonna leave it as it is, because I just really like the way that it's softening up some of the details there. Um, we've got grainy, which we could go for if you want more texture, but again, I like the default on this. And I don't think we need any more punch. This looks super, super nice to me. I'm going to do a tiny little straighten, and I would probably remove this from the image if I was, uh, was doing this as a final edit, but let me show you the before. So there's the before, and there's after, and that's with AQ15-1 again. And there's the side-by-side -side comparison. So again, we've lifted the exposure a little bit there as well, so um, you can kind of see 
uh, a little bit more detail in the subjects there. But love the way this rendering the blues. You know, obviously you can see the blues in the original image and how they've shifted and lifted. Again, the colors in the outfit here. Um, and then that, that effect we've got going on in the mask here. So this is without it and this is with it. Just really adds a nice soft diffuse look across the image, which I think looks really, really nice on this. Okay, so another indoor image with number four. So again, quite an underexposed image here. I'm gonna go ahead, let's do an auto white balance. It needs a little bit more warmth. Let's bring the exposure up. And let's see if we can straighten this up a tiny little bit. I love this shot though, uh, with the couple sat on the stairs and I've got the cat down here. Super nice, um, AQ15-1. AQ15-2 and AQ15-3. I think three has got to be the one. I love the warm tone in, especially because there's quite a lot of white in this um, in this image from the highlights, the light coming in from the windows, but also the white of the stairs and the staircase and everything. Um, so I think just adding a little bit more warmth um, with AQ15-3 looks really nice. So let's check out the profile and then we'll kind of uh, correct the the white balance, sorry, the exposure. So I think uh, when we increase this, you'll see it lifts up the shadows, which in this instance is quite handy because the subjects are in shadow here. And then we've got the cat that we wanna keep in the shot, but is in the, uh, in the light there. So if we use this to increase the shadows, and then we could use, yeah, we'll use punchy just to bring a little bit more of that um, contrast back. So we can go ahead and bring the exposure up a tiny little bit. I think somewhere around there looks good to me. Probably wouldn't use Dreamy on this because we've already got quite a lot of sort of soft uh, diffused haziness going on with the light coming in through the blinds there and reflecting off all the walls. So I don't think we need any of that. Uh, and the grain does look nice actually. Yeah, let's go for the, let's go for grainy. Just add a little bit more of that grain texture um, to the image. So that's looking really nice. Here's the before and after. That's with AQ15-3. Uh, we've increased the opalescent profile quite a lot. So that's just really lifted up those shadows. And then we've used the, uh, the punchy tool that's included just to add a little bit more contrast back into the image uh, and grainy just to add a little bit more of, te of that texture. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison. So again, a really great example of quite a challenging uh, quite a challenging image. You know, we've got really harsh light coming in, quite deep shadows, and it just really balances them out very, very well. Love this image from Sigrid. Yeva says, oh, a kitty, yes. Always got time for a kitty. Olivia says, super nice indeed. It's so helpful to see these on different environments. Lawrence says clearly the cat is a star of this photo. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so we've got a couple of images left. So we'll get those edited in just a moment. And then once we've got those two edited, we'll have a little bit of a review of the photos. We'll go through all the before and afters, and then we'll come back together and we will share a winner for a pre-release copy of this set. Uh, which is Quest 15 Opalescent. This will be coming out, like I said, uh, on the 1st of April. So not too long to wait. Uh, if you're a Quest subscriber, great news. You'll be able to download this for free as part of your subscription on the 1st. Um, and just as a reminder, Quest subscription is only $8 each month. You'll get a new set of presets uh, and profiles as part of that each and every month. Uh, so definitely something to check out if you haven't already. Just loads of great editing tools. Uh, and those sets, the Quest sets, are really the ones where we, as developers, uh, really push the boundaries of what's possible and really experiment and bring as much kind of creativity to these sets as possible. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely take a look at subscribing. Like I said, Quest is just $8 each month. Uh, or if not, you'll be able to buy this set standalone for $49 um, if you're not interested in subscribing. So they're available both ways. 
All right, image number seven, and then we'll do eight, and that'll wrap up the edits. So we've got this really nice outdoor image again, another example that's gonna show off the greens. Uh, so I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit here, just looking at the subject's features. I'm gonna bring some more warmth in. Let's see, somewhere around there looks good to me. Uh, I think the tint's looking okay. So let's take a look at the presets, AQ15-1. Again, I really like the uh, the way that the greens render with AQ15-1. AQ15-2, get those warmer toned greens. And then AQ15-3. And actually, I think for this, three is looking quite nice. Just the way that it's uh, rendering the green, because it's quite a green heavy image. I think it's quite nice to not desaturate them too much. I think this is a nice balance between keeping the saturation of the greens uh, without being too over the top uh, and in your face. So opalescent, I will probably increase this just a little bit, just again to balance out the highlights and shadows and just sort of bring a little bit more of that pastel look to the colors. Uh, dreamy, I think we could definitely use Dreamy. I'm going to go ahead and apply a subtract. So in the new masking tools, um, as well as adding an effect, you can now subtract that particular effect within the mask. So the effect that we've got here is applied with a brush. So that's there as default. Um, you can see it applies it to the whole image. But I can go ahead and use subtract to then choose a linear gradient, a brush, or a radial gradient. Um, I'll go with radial again, because it's just a nice one to select a small area of the image um, to reduce the effect. So I'm gonna have the feather to be uh, relatively relatively hard just so that I can be really selective with where this goes I think somewhere around there so we still get that softness at the bottom here we get the softness all the way around these edges uh, but we can just see the detail on the subjects face which I think looks really really nice so here is without the effect at all here's with so just softens up those edges looks really really nice and then with the radial gradient I can just remove that from the subject so this is with it applied to the whole image and then this is with it removed from the subject so just brings us back to having a little bit of detail there um, in the subject's face and their hair so let's go ahead and apply that um, I don't think I'm going to add any more grain because I think this looks really nice as it is and we don't need any more punch so I think this is the edit here's before and here's after really really nice We've added a little bit of uh, warmth through the temperature there as well, but this preset brings uh, some of that warmth. We get that nice soft rendering throughout, really nice green toning. And there's the side by side. Haley says, love those more natural greens. Yeah, I think for this, it would be a shame to kind of desaturate the greens too much, I think. They, they add too much to this particular image to remove them. So again, nice to have that flexibility. We've got three different presets all bringing something slightly different uh, to each of the primary colors there. If I go ahead and zoom in on this image, we can see the subject there and how that's rendering. And if you just look at the, the background here, you can see just how it's rendering the greens, the softness as it goes through the image. So you can see it's quite a lot more uh, a lot more contrast in these sort of finer details in the background that just draw your eye away from the subject. So by softening those up, we get the, uh, the effect of drawing your eye to the subject there while still sort of retaining that nice look to the rest of the image. Okay, so we're on the last image now. Thank you so much for sticking around. So we'll be announcing a winner of the pre-release set very, very soon. I'm just gonna go ahead and straighten this image up just a tiny little bit. Okay, so uh, exposure looking good. White balance is looking good. I probably wouldn't change any of those on this. Uh, let's take a look at the preset. So AQ15-1, AQ15-2, and AQ15-3. It's a toss up between one and three. 
So the biggest difference between those two based on the colors in this image is, is just gonna be the highlights. So with AQ15-1, the highlights are a little bit more neutral looking, whereas with AQ15-2, it adds a little bit of that warmth to the highlights. So let me know, what do you think? AQ15-1 or three? This is one, and this is three. What do we think? Ashley said, "Couldn't wait, can't wait to see what it does to the pink." Yeah, you know what? This this image is a really um, a really great one because a lot of presets could desaturate the colors that are in the background here quite a lot. Um, but this set does a really good job of retaining these. So, like I said before, the colors are really natural. They're just lifted and have a little bit more um, vibrate vibrance, but not necessarily saturation. Haley said three. Yeah, I I think three as well. I think the warm toning looks really nice, but let's see if anyone else selects anything different. Three or one, let me know. Three, I think, but it's hard to choose, says Olivia. Yeah, it is quite hard to choose. They're, they're fairly similar in this image because there's not a lot of different colors, and these two presets retain the colors that are in the image um, in a similar way, but you've just got that slight difference in the highlights, so I think we'll go for three. Um, again, we've got the opalescent profile. And I think for this, I'm, I might not increase it, or if I will, it's just gonna be a tiny little bit. Yeah, maybe around about there, so like 30, so a really small amount. Um, and I'll probably just bring the exposure back down a tiny touch, so it's still got that nice level of brightness to it. So you might notice I, I use a white background when I'm editing it in Lightroom, so you can click, you can right click and you can choose uh, the background color. Uh, and I just find that this helps me to know where the white point is, um, regardless of how bright or dark my display is, because sometimes I'll find that if my display is a little bit darker, I'll ed edit images too bright and vice versa. But if I have the white background, it helps me to see where true white is and how the images look. So top tip for you if you struggle with that. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, the tools. We've got Dreamy. I don't think I'll apply this because I think the way that the, the light's hitting the subjects here, um, it's just gonna soften the image up just a little bit too much. Uh, grainy, again, probably wouldn't add this, uh, add too much grain to this because I think um, just the way that it's styled and the look of this image, it, it doesn't suit having loads of grain. So I think the default amount is just a nice, nice amount there. I don't think we'll need punchy. Again, it's gonna be personal preference. If you like to have a little bit more shape, a little bit more punch to your images, um, the punchy tool is, is a nice way of pushing the presets that way. And one thing that I find myself doing with this set is applying punchy and then increasing opalescent to kind of offset it, which can look quite nice. Um, and that, that actually does look really nice. I've increased it to uh, 111, and that's with the punchy applied. Um, so that's that's without it, and that's with it. So actually, yeah, that, that looks really nice. I'm gonna leave it as it is. So um, by apply, applying punchy and adding more contrast to the image, I've been able to increase opalescent. Um, which has just lifted the shadow in the subject's hair. So you can see a little bit more of the detail in, the, in both of their hair um, without it looking unnatural or sort of too low contrast. Um, so actually that's worked really well. So there's another top tip for you. If you find that you like the punchy look, but you don't want to have too much contrast, you can apply it and then increase opalescent. And you've got loads of wiggle room because it goes up to 200. There's loads of wiggle room going from zero all the way to 200. So plenty of... Uh, plenty of opportunity to play with. So here's the before and here's after. So it's not a massive, massive change, but I just think that is a really nice finishing touch on that image. You get that kind of um, candy floss look. It just uh, lifts those colors up and just softens them a little bit as well, but retains sort of a very natural level of saturation. Um, which is not easy to do. So bravo, Chris, you've done an amazing job with these presets. Here's the side-by-side. -side. Lauren says, great tip. Haley says, I never thought about that. Great idea. Yeah, it's just something that I found really useful um, is having that white background. Um, especially if you're sort of editing on a laptop and your lighting scenarios and things are changing quite a lot. It can be quite easy to overdo it or undercook it if you're uh, going off the brightness on your screen. Or 
Awesome, so that is all of the images edited. We'll go through and I'll show you all the before and afters side by side. Uh, and then we will come back and we'll be announcing a winner for a pre-release copy of this set. Uh, so keep your eye on the chat. Once we come back, we'll be announcing a winner. Um, but thank you very much for sticking with me through this. Thank you for your questions and your, your comments. It's great to have you here. I love doing these live streams. All right, let's take a look. So if we go back into here, I'll show you the before and after side by side. Let's get rid of these on the side here. Awesome, so the first image, we've got the before on the left and the after on the right. And these are all edited with Quest 15 Opalescent. Love this photo, super nice. Big transformation, because obviously we've got the underexposed image on the left, brought that right up. Use Opalescent to lift the shadows back out as well. And we've got those lovely pastel colors. Uh, the, the colors in this image really, really suit this because we've got those kind of, those tones already there. So love this one. Again, love this one as well. Like I said before, love the what it's done with the sky there, the blues in that. Lifted the shadows up, just balanced out the highlights and the shadows, uh, which is, you know, on this image, it was very, very contrasty. We've got a lot of side light coming in there. And um, so it's really helped to retain the details. Indoor image here, again, another difficult um, scene. You've got those highlights in the background, backlit subjects that are in quite a lot of shadow there. Um, so again, it's done a really good job of balancing those two out. Outdoor photo with the greens, lovely example of how the greens render in this. And again, the highlights, retaining the, uh, the detail in the clouds in the back there. Another indoor photo, quite a lot of white balance correction just to get this looking a little bit more natural, but it's done a great job of, uh, again, balancing the highlights and shadows. Uh, the, the, the colors throughout this image are super, super nice. Skin tones look really, really good. This image with uh, a really heavy green background, very prominent greens in this one. So I think uh, using AQ15.3 has done a really nice job of just retaining that, making sure it's part of the final image. Um, but again, we've got that nice softness from using the uh, the Dreamy preset. The last edit that we just did with those really nice candy floss background colors. Love the styling on this one. And then I think this is one of the first images that we edited. This lovely maternity shot here. Um, nice landscape background, just kind of retains enough of the detail there to see where the subject is, but lift out the, the shadows on the subject so we can kind of see them nice and clearly. And then this image here with this gorgeous uh, backdrop with all the branches, got the light coming in from the back there, uh, a little bit of haziness in the top right corner, which I love as well. Um, and again, lifted the shadows up quite a lot. Um, we've increased the exposure uh, from the default. And then we've got these gorgeous colors that are from the preset and the opalescent profile. So that's it. Another incredible stream. We're gonna be announcing the winner in the chat in just a couple of moments. So do stick around for that. Just as a reminder, um, we have our sale on at the moment. That's running for the next couple of days. So until the 31st of March, um, you can get 30% off our presets using the, uh, the code spring sale. So definitely take advantage of that if you've been eyeing something up. Um, and this set, Quest 15 Opalescent will be coming out on the 1st of April. Um, so uh, if you don't win it, don't worry about to get your hands on this. You can either subscribe to our Quest subscription for $8 each month or you'll be able to buy these standalone for $49. So there we go. Lawrence announced the winners. The winners of the Quest 15 Opalescent pre-release set are Bobby and Wayne. Bobby and Wayne, well done. Congratulations. You are both winning a pre-release copy of the set. So just drop us an email and we'll get those, uh, get those presets over to you. But a big thank you to everyone else uh, for joining as well. Big congratulations to our two winners. Uh, and yeah, thanks for, for thanks for joining. Uh, we we host these at least once a month, so do subscribe to our YouTube channel. They're all hosted through YouTube now. You can watch these back as well. So if you like this and you want to see some of our previous ones, you can watch those back. Loads of great education content content on the channel as well. We're adding stuff every week, so make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and if you can hit that notification bell as well, because that just lets you know when we post something new. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for joining, and I'll see you again in another one. Peace.